Welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this episode, we will be looking at a Moonraker Major that I got from eBay as faulty with no transmit. So, let's see if we can fix it. So, first off, let's power the radio up and see whether we actually do have a fault. So, I've got my power meter sat there. Now it looks like it's receiving, but as you can see, no transmit, no movement on the needle, on the power meter, and no LEDs on the front of the radio. And nothing on the frequency counter. So it looks like we do not have any transmit at all. So first things first, let's have a look at the base of the output transistor or the collector. See whether we're getting any RF output indicated on the oscilloscope. And as you can see, absolutely nothing. So it's not looking like it's the output transistor. Now somebody has done some work in there by the looks of it around the output transistor. Not sure whether somebody else has actually tried to replace it or or actually tried to find this fault. But apart from that little bit of work down there everything seems to be okay. front of the radio looks very bent. Now I actually found out why this was later is because the LEDs wouldn't fit in the front so when they were assembling it they just bent it to make it fit. So first things first let's have a look at the pre-drive see whether we've got any RF output on the pre-drive. Again, nothing on the base of the final output. Let's go down to the pre drive. And nothing, nothing at all. Not even a glimmer of RF power. So we need to investigate a bit further. Just checking here whether we've got a lock voltage on the VC, uh, the PLL. We do have some voltage that's changing. And I believe a high state shows that it's, it should be locked. Now let's go into the main power rails, the RX and TX. So whilst measuring around Q9, I noticed that the emitter voltage was up at 12 volts, which I thought was quite high considering that the RX and TX volts should be 6 and 8 volts. So I decided to take Q9 out and have a look at it and do some measurements. Now that seems normal, but as you can see, that is dead short. So that's probably sending 12 volts up the up the uh, receive line. So let's just hope it's not done any more damage. Now I replaced this transistor and I did get a little bit. But as I was messing about with it I did notice that if you press the board we could get a little bit of RF. Now I don't know whether you can see just to the left of the oscilloscope picture just above where the scope probe is there, it looks like a dry joint. 
Now, as I was pro probing it, we got RF. So I think we had a dry joint just just there, just above that scope probe then. Now, I couldn't get it to go back off again at this point. So the only good thing we could do there is give it a good soldering. And that actually got us back to getting a little bit of RF output. As you can see, we're measuring on the on the pre-drive there. And we do have RF output now, and it seems to be stable. So I'll solder up that area, and hopefully that sorts that out. So let's give it a tune up and see whether we can actually get full RF output because it's still showing very low. And this is connected to the antenna output. As you can see, we do have RF output, but it is very, very, very low. But it is actually transmitting. So maybe we have a fault with the final output. Now this is where it gets interesting. I removed this final output transistor, which looked okay, but then I recognised the markings on it. And it's had the same markings as, as the transistors that I bought a few months ago that I could never get to work. And these were supposed to be genuine transistors off a reputable supplier on eBay. As you can see, there was quite distinguishing marks underneath the 2078. And we'll look at the transistor that come out of it, and it's got exactly the same marks. Now, I did try these transistors once before and could not get any decent RF power, so I want to try and find a replacement 2078. So I managed to get one out of a out of a scrap chassis. And there we have it. We have two watts at least. This meter is not very good on power, but it does show that we've got RF output. So let's try and bring it up. Because you don't know who's been twiddling in this and what they've twiddled. Now on my other power meter it is showing a little bit more output. So I think it's just this meter that's a bit lazy. And there you can see we're bang on frequency. Both channel 1 and channel 40. So these transistors so these transistors were bought off a reputable supplier on eBay who said that they were genuine. But I don't think they're genuine because these transistors do not produce any RF output or very little RF output. When I replaced it with a 2078 out of a scrap chassis, as you could see, we had plenty of RF power. So these sellers cannot be really trusted on eBay. It was a UK seller, and he did say he prided himself in genuine parts. I think I may be getting in contact with him to say that these transistors are basically rubbish. And the other transistor we have there, that's the one with the short on it, that caused possibly another fault. So I think this radio had, had a dry joint to start off with. And somebody's replaced this RF output and then couldn't get any output on it at all. And just dug themselves into a hole. That they could not find the fault due to a bad, bad RF output transistor. Or a fake hour RF output transistor. So 
so there we have the radio after a clean up straightened out all the leds on the front so the front's not bent anymore they all sit in perfectly now we have a good working radio again anyway thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did please like subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode